Great to be back. I got to tell you, I've been married to my wife, Tammy, for 33 consecutive years. Just <laughs> one head after another. Thank you. And when you've been with a person that long, you learn to trust their instincts. So when she said to me a while back, you need to get diagnosed now. I said, for what? I feel fine. She said, that attention deficit stuff, I know you got it and it's driving me insane. <laughs> So I said, why now? She goes, what do you mean, why now? I said, well, if I got attention deficit, I've had it for 60 years. I've had it my whole life. It's not a virus. You can't catch it on a toilet seat. <laughs> it's not like you go to the bathroom in a mall and you come out two days later and you go, boy, I'm so distracted. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> so why you bother about it now? She said, because you keep telling me you'll do things around this house and you don't do them and it's driving me nuts. That's not attention deficit. That's passive aggressive. <laughs> And I've had that for 63 years. <laughs> but I honored my wife, because that's what a man does, sir. That's right, you do, right? You honor your wife. I went and got diagnosed. I spent an hour with a psychologist. After an hour, it turns out, I'm not only do I have attention deficit, I'm also a functioning hypochondriac. <laughs> functioning, I'm not clinical. Those people are sick. <laughs> but this is how God protects his children. It's my ADHD that keeps my hypochondria functional. <laughs> On those days, I've convinced myself I need an ambulance. By the time I get to the phone to call one, I've been distracted four or five times. <laughs> I usually wind up in the kitchen. I got a telephone. I can't remember why I got a telephone. And that's when I order the pizza. So. My kids love me. Dad's dying again. Really? Pepperoni pops. <laughs> And, and Tammy, Tammy mocks me. She does. She makes, we'll be laying in bed watching Discovery Channel and some strange new disease. Not four minutes into it, she leans over. You got it yet? <laughs> Thinking about it. <laughs> What's well, a nodule? I could have nodules. I don't even own a nodule. Oh boy, I'm feeling nodule all of a sudden. That's <laughs> when the kids are yelling, breadstick, shut up, you punks. I could die on you. <laughs> She's taken an over, uh, an over interest in my health. She really did. A few years back, I had a physical. I, I was 60, I had a physical, no, normal thing. Full-blown physical. Takes seven to, day, seven to 10 days to get the results. So I'm on the road, she calls me up, she goes, the doctor's office just called about your physical. So I said, what'd they say? She said, I'll paraphrase. Doctor said, if you were part of a wildebeest herd, the lions would be circling you right now. <laughs> That means. She says, you're old, your heart's gonna blow up and you're gonna make me a widow. Because you don't do anything, you don't move, you don't do anything. So she went out and she bought two Fitbits, two, one for me, one for her, to monitor my, my entire movement. That was the whole point. She signed online to be my friend. <laughs> I didn't even know what that entailed until like, turns out they can monitor your life. She caught me in a lie, that's my point. She I, I, I lie to my wife, I'm not, not often, but if you've been married more than a week, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there are just conversations I don't want to have with the, and one of them is about my health. I'm telling you, she called, I'm on, I'm on the road, I'm in a hotel room, one o'clock in the afternoon, I have not left the hotel room. One in the afternoon, phone rings, I see it's her, and I know she's gonna ask me, what'd you do today? And if I say nothing, she's gonna give me the whole widow argument. Your heart's gonna blow up, you're gonna die, you're gonna leave me alone. <laughs> So phone rings, sure enough, first question she asked, what'd you do today? And I, I told her, I said, well, I got up, I walked them all, came back, had some breakfast. She goes, sure walk, you've only taken 91 steps all day. <laughs> How do you know that? She goes, I'm your friend. I go, well, not anymore, you're not. <laughs> I did learn something that day. Four trips to a commode at a Holiday Inn Express, 91 steps. <laughs> That's right. Every day's a learning day, folks. <laughs> These Fitbits, I don't know if anybody has one. They monitor your entire life. They actually tell me how many times I get up in the middle of the night and use the restroom. Apparently, I wasn't giving up enough of my privacy to Apple, Google, and the government. <laughs> and then my wife sends me text messages based on that information. You were up five times last night, Jeff. Why are you so restless? Well, Brandon and Angelina split up. Who can sleep? <laughs> 
And if that isn't, I'm watching Golf Channel, 10 in the morning, two in the afternoon, I get a text message from my wife. Are you dead? You've taken 78 steps in four hours. <laughs> Most of that's because my foot fell asleep and then I was banging it on the floor. God <laughs> sakes, woman, leave me alone. So I looked for shortcuts just to get her off my back and I found out you don't even have to move to rack up steps on Fitbit. You just sit in your chair and move your arm up and down. <laughs> Look at me, folks, I'm running a 5K right in front of you. <laughs>